What's up guys? I'm still getting new or getting uh, used to this new camera and microphone setup so um, hopefully you're noticing a difference in video and audio quality but anyway um, what I wanted to do today is just kind of an update a uh, general update on a variety of projects and uh, I think I had mentioned unless I didn't get that video out but um, I've got a couple new projects and one of them is here I just put a video out on that. The other one is not here, but uh, that should be the next video that comes out is kind of a, uh, an introduction and a review on that project. So, And that one's not really a project. It's more of like a new hobby that I'm getting into that I thought you guys might enjoy uh, seeing. So anyway, I'll turn you around and we'll take a walk around. It's nice and windy today, so... Uh, we'll give this windscreen a good test and I'm just gonna pull the mic off and flip it around as usual That way you can still hear me clearly Bear with me just a second here All right, so uh, I just want to kind of walk around hopefully the lighting has adjusted by now you can see my robot mower out cutting the grass that is one thing I wanted to discuss uh, just very briefly. I just put out a video on it, so if you're a regular viewer, you have already seen that. If not, um, and you're curious about it, you can go there for all the information on that. But anyway, that's my new Redback robot mower that I actually carry uh, as a dealer. Um, and that's new this year or end of last year. But anyway, it is very cool, highly recommended and you can watch that video for more information on that. A um, couple projects up and coming. Uh, I'll kind of do that. I'll give you the up and coming stuff and then we'll look at some of the stuff that's currently in waiting um, to give you an update on that as well. Um, two things out here in the pile that I'm looking to get to soon. One is this 44 inch um, kind of rough cut, I don't know what they call these, uh, you kind of drag this behind your um, four-wheeler or uh, if you have another mower you can drag this behind it and you can actually kick it out at a variety of angles. You can see the holes here, there's uh, what is that, three, three, three different adjustments left or right. You can kick the mower out and it'll actually tow it behind whatever vehicle you're using at an angle. And so you're gonna mow whatever your existing mower is in addition to this. So the one that I have in mind is a, a giant zero turn snapper I just got done. And that has a 52 inch cut. And then we'll add that to this 44 inch cut. Roughly, you'll have just a little bit of overlap, but um, the maximum there would be, what is that, 56 and 40, it's 96 which is eight feet, do I have that right? Um, so you're cutting quite a bit of grass with the two of those. And I have some uh, engines over there, I'll show you in a second, that I'm planning to swap that out with. The engine on there now is stuck. And uh, I haven't spent much time with it, but considering that I have four spare engines that are much more modern, V-twin, much more powerful, um, I'm just planning on going ahead and swapping that out as long as things line up. Um, the one disadvantage with that is I'll have to add a battery because those are electric start only and also a fuel system of some sort. So we'll see. But just wanted to give you a heads up on that. We'll be up and coming. Something else that I'm kind of excited about, this one will be a ways down the road. Um, seasonally for the is the biggest reason but I have back here I'll try to get back in here I have a rear end off of just a random garden tractor and that's got the differential and the drive built into it and what I'm planning on doing I have don't really have the plans yet but what I'm planning on doing is taking that and mating it with this massive Aaron's lawn tractor snowblower. So this is, I haven't even measured it, but I would guess it's dang near a 36 inch snowblower. 
and it has a humongous intake on it and a big chute. And so I'm planning on somehow making my own snowblower. I'm going to have that snowblower with that other wheel drive and then kind of uh, make some handles and a motor mount and just throw a, a regular old horizontal, probably six horse. Um, if we can afford it, we'll go bigger, but I might just gear it for a six horse because I can get those pretty readily and not very expensive. So planning on doing a massive snowblower for this coming winter. So we have plenty of time on that and I don't want to rush into another project when I still have however many projects still in waiting. So anyway, that will be on the way as well. And here are the four engines I mentioned. Um, I think they're all just about identical, V-twin Briggs, and uh, probably not much wrong with them. I get these from a kind of recall situation um, where there's just minor issues where they were recalled, and usually they're a pretty quick fix. So anyway, uh, that's what's up and coming. And now I'll go ahead and show you what's currently in the works. So the big question is probably, what's up with the motorbike? Let me turn the radio down here. So yeah, the motorbike has been a long time coming. And uh, I'll give you an update on that. Um, so my last video was getting the fuel tank installed and welded in there, um, and then trying to get things to start. I think I did that off camera, but basically I've run into a couple issues trying to get it to start. And what I'm having issues with is getting fuel to the carburetor because the pickup um, in the bottom of the tank is here and the carburetor is here. So it's basically level, if not fairly higher. And so I'm not getting a gravity feed into that carburetor. So what I tried to do is I tried just a standard Briggs McCooney knockoff um, pulse pump, they call them, where you have vacuum pulsing on this diaphragm fuel pump and an in and an out and trying to get fuel pressure that way. And that did not work. So I switched that out to another model of fuel pump. You can see it down there. And that did not work. So basically... Where I'm at is I can either put a totally different tank on it that sits up higher and uh, gives us our gravity feed, which would be nice, but it just kind of stinks that I went to all this work um, to get this one set up and it's not working. Um, another option I have is I could put a small battery on it with an electric pump and go that route, or the route that I'm going to start with is one that I've actually already bought stuff for. I got a make your own manifold kit from Affordable Go-Karts and uh, what this is is just a 90 piece of pipe and then a flange for each end that works with their carburetor that I'm using and what I'm planning to do with that is make some sort of a manifold that comes out and slightly down I'm not exactly sure what it'll look like, but it'll put our carburetor lower, which will hopefully give us our gravity feed at that point. So the reason I'm starting with that route is if I stick with this tank or go with a different tank, having the carburetor lower is basically a given in either case. Um, because it's such a low profile bike, the tank is going to sit low no matter where it's at. And so... I'm hoping that it won't be too much work to get that carburetor lower and make it work that way. So anyway, that's where the motorized bike sits currently. And it's frustrating because I want to be out riding it right now. But uh, my only hang up is not having any fuel. So um, I guess even temporarily I could just tie, zip tie a small mower tank or something under the seat or up higher or whatever to ride it. But um, for one thing, we've had so much rain here, it has not been rideable, uh, even if it was running. So anyway, enough excuses on that. I'm hoping to get to it very soon and get part 12, I think it is, out. And uh, 
get that thing done with because I have big motorbike plans that I want to move on to. So need to get this one done. A um, couple other projects. Uh, you've got my motorcycle here. And this one is hopefully very close. This sat for, geez, probably two or three years because all of a sudden one day I did not have spark. I had kind of intermittent spark and then not enough spark to even take it anywhere and then finally no spark. Um, so I kind of took things apart. I think I got it figured out, but I'm a little bit nervous because I didn't really do anything. I just kind of disassembled some things and cleaned them up, put them back, and I have spark currently, so I'm hoping it's okay. Um, but another issue I had way back when it was running is the gas tank leaked. So I bought a new gas tank and just got my petcocks figured out. I went up to the hardware store and got some sweet little brass petcocks that I've got to get wired up or plumbed up. And uh, as long as we still have spark at that point, I'm just going to change the fluids and that thing will be done. So... Um, I'm just going to probably do a ride video on that one. I had kind of mentioned that um, there had been some interest in the background of my other videos, and I've never really done a video on it, but uh, I don't think it's worthy of a series at this point. I just have a couple little loose ends to tie up and uh, can take it for a ride. So you'll be seeing that hopefully in the near future. Um, and if it doesn't run, I'm about to the point where I'm going to take it somewhere and have them get it ready for me. Um, partially because my knowledge on motorcycles is slim, but also because my time is even more slim. So it's a shame that it just sits here and I can't make use of it and ride it, and uh, I think I'm just gonna take it somewhere, if it doesn't work, so we'll find out. And then finally, for upcoming projects, this old Honda, uh, what is this? A 1979 Honda XL500 S? I do think uh, that's what it is. Anyway, this thing is kind of going to be a resto mod. And let me try to back up a little bit more and show it. Um, what I want to do with this is kind of just the basics to start with. New tires, new chain, new sprockets. Clean the tank out, even though I think it's pretty clean. Um, but other than that, I'm planning to kind of strip it down, um, remove the unnecessary stuff, turn signals, uh, get a much more low profile tail light, and either recover or replace the seat. Um, maybe better quality shocks, like a progressive shock in the rear. I'd like to do disc brakes on the front, but from what I'm reading, that is a lot more work than I want to get into. So, uh, and then new exhaust. I think I'll pull this old rusty exhaust off and put new exhaust on. And uh, we'll see, maybe clean up the battery and electrical just to kind of have it look more like this bike does, where it's just very stripped down, basic bare bones. That's kind of what we're going for on this one. Um, not going to really change anything structurally, just uh, take off all the unnecessary stuff to clean it up. So that will possibly be a series. We'll see. Um, with the intended motorbike projects that I have, um, I think I'm going to kind of focus on those, making those into series. But I do want to um, keep a lot of different stuff coming for various interests that might be watching the channel. So anyway, that's what I've got for now. Just wanted to update you all and turn this around again. Uh, yeah, that's it. We're getting real close to 1,000 subscribers. We're at, last time I checked, like 880, something like that. Um, and I'm really shooting for that 1,000 mark, so that would be very sweet. It's been, uh, geez, my channel's been around for probably coming up on 10 years, maybe 9 years. Um, and I roughly doubled subscribers in the last two years, so that was nice. I kind of sat around that four, five hundred, four or five hundred mark for a long time, and uh, now that I'm getting more uploads coming out, hoping to grow the channel to get to that thousand. So 
If you are watching the video, even if you don't want to watch my future videos and want to give me a pity subscribe, I will gladly take it. <laughs> Otherwise, um, be on the lookout for more content. Trying to at least do a weekly upload, so I hope you've noticed my efforts there. Um, and uh, one thing I might do is record offline, just kind of archive some stuff and do a, a regular release more on time so that you know what to look for. I realize a lot of my releases come out kind of in the middle of the night and that doesn't help things. So I'll try to get better on that too. But anyway, I uh, appreciate you watching and uh, I will see you guys on the next video.